For years, the Philippines has been moving closer to China. Now, China may have gone too far. The alliances could be changing. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode has been sponsored by Mova Globes. These are really amazing globes that spin on their own without cords or batteries. They're very technically difficult to make, but they're also difficult to make for another reason. Not every country agrees on what the borders are. For example, China and the Philippines. Fight. As you can see in this limited edition Mova Globe, China claims almost the entire South China Sea with its nine dash line. And China's nine dash line is really, really close to the Philippines, which the Philippines does not agree with. And this maritime border dispute is one of the main reasons why relations between China and the Philippines have been getting worse. In fact, relations have gotten so bad that now the Philippines is even willing to look for help from the evil American imperialists. Here's what's happening. This is the Scarborough Shoal. It's 150 miles off the coast of the Philippines and more than 500 miles off the coast of mainland China. According to international law, it's within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. But fishermen from the Philippines, China, and other countries like Vietnam have been going there for centuries. It was never much of a problem until 2012 when China started pushing its territorial claims, which led to a naval standoff. After two months of tension, U.S. President Barack Obama helped negotiate a settlement. Both sides agreed to leave. The Philippines pulled their Navy ships away, and China did not. They just kind of stayed there. It's almost like communists can't be trusted. So the Filipino president at the time filed for arbitration against China in the Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague. And it's not just over the Scarborough Shoal, but other disputed territory too. But arbitration takes years. In the meantime, the president's term ended and he was replaced by President Rodrigo Duterte, who said during his campaign that he'd stake the Philippines' territorial claims by riding to the disputed islands on a jet ski. And soon after the election, the Philippines won their arbitration in court. Things were looking up for the Philippines. Until China said they were rejecting the court's ruling. It's almost like communists can't be trusted. But Duterte had a plan. He said, bye bye America, and hello China. Which led to some uncomfortable questions for Duterte. One thing you haven't delivered on yet is your promise to ride a jet ski out to the disputed territory in the South China Sea uh, and plant the Philippine flag on there. Now many people, many voters I assume, took that as a sign that you were going to be tough on China in that disputed territory in the South China Sea yeah. or the West Philippine Sea, but you haven't been. Why? Do you really think that, that I would go, or go there riding? I don't, I don't even own a jet. No, I that don't. But a, people perceived that as a sign that you no, were going it, to get tough with it China. It was a hyperbole. Literally, it's a hyperbole. You cannot take me to ride. I don't even know how to swim. Oh, Duterte, master of hyperbole. So Duterte carried out his plan of ending the territorial disputes by becoming BFFs with China. Meanwhile, China kept building more and more artificial islands and putting military stuff on them, and being really mean to Filipino fishermen. And then the people in the Philippines got angry. And then that anger turned towards Duterte for selling out their sovereignty to China, especially when he joked that the Philippines could become a province of China. Oh, Duterte, master of hyperbole. But despite all the anger from Filipinos, in February this year, Duterte gave notice that he was ending the Visiting Forces Agreement with the U.S., which let American troops be stationed on Filipino military bases. Because Duterte still wanted to warm up to China. Sure, it's been four years of failure, but don't worry, we're still warming up. But then something changed in the early part of this year. I forget what it was, but it was a big thing that came from China and threatened everyone in the Philippines. Oh right, the Chinese Coast Guard. 
In May, the Chinese Coast Guard increased their presence in the Scarborough Shoal, even though the Scarborough Shoal is within the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. And China threatened to arrest Filipino fishermen. And China started confiscating Filipino fishing devices called paellos. And that was pretty much the last straw. When China's Coast Guard comes into your exclusive economic zone and threatens to arrest your citizens, it's a good time to reevaluate your relationship. Also, a Chinese beauty product hit the shelves in the Philippines capital of Manila that listed its address as Manila Province, People's Republic of China. It was probably just hyperbole. Anyway, in June, the Duterte administration backed off on their threat and decided to not end the visiting forces agreement with the U.S., at least for now. It seems that Manila may have concluded that its previous rapprochement with Beijing would not protect Philippine interests. What? I mean, it's almost like communists can't be trusted. And since June, the Philippines has felt emboldened to take a tougher stance against China. Several weeks ago, the Chinese Coast Guard threatened Filipino aircraft flying over the South China Sea, and the Philippines lodged a formal protest. And at the end of August, the Secretary of Foreign Affairs said that the Philippines would call the U.S. if China attacked. That's based on the fact that the U.S. and the Philippines have a mutual defense treaty. His statement is a definite policy shift. And it's one the U.S. is happy about. America's military agreements with the Philippines provide a legal framework for American troops to be stationed in the area. And that's an important part of the U.S.'s strategy to make sure the Chinese regime doesn't completely take over the South China Sea. That and sending U.S. Navy ships through the sea every couple of months to reinforce that it's international waters. The Secretary of Foreign Affairs also said that the Philippines would continue air patrols over the South China Sea, despite the fact that Beijing called them illegal provocations. But it doesn't look like the Philippines or at least Duterte, has given up on the relationship with China yet. For example, back in July, Duterte reiterated that the Philippines couldn't really do anything about their claims in the South China Sea because China has the arms, we do not have it. Was that one hyperbole? I can't quite tell. He also banned the Filipino Navy from doing joint exercises with the U.S. in the South China Sea. After the U.S. blacklisted 24 Chinese companies for militarizing the South China Sea, the Filipino foreign minister recommended that the Philippines also stop doing business with those Chinese companies. But Duterte said no. Now it's possible Duterte is being inconsistent on the South China Sea because he's trying to get a coronavirus vaccine from China. Although Duterte has now accepted Russia's offer of a vaccine and even said he would volunteer to test it himself. Okay, that one definitely sounds like hyperbole. Does that mean the Philippines will now push back harder in the South China Sea? We'll have to wait and see. And speaking of the South China Sea, this episode has been sponsored by Mova Globes. You've seen one of these globes on my desk before. The technology is really amazing. When you pick it up, it keeps spinning. And when you put it back on its base, it corrects its motion and starts rotating again powered by ambient light. And if you're wondering why this particular design shows China's nine-dash line territorial claim, well, it's because the Chinese government required it. In January, we did a whole episode called How China is Secretly Changing Everyone's Maps, which includes the fascinating story of why MOVA Globes pulled their manufacturing out of China. MOVA doesn't make globes with the nine-dash line anymore, but while they're still in stock, you can still get one of these collector's edition globes like I have. MOVA has dozens of other cool designs too. So click the link in the description below and pick your favorite version. MOVA Globes is currently offering 15% off. More details in the description below. And when you buy a MOVA Globe, you'll also be supporting your favorite show about China. So click below to check out Mova Globes now. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored. <laughs>